I recently discovered that my horse has ring bone. Mm, bummer. He is on a joint supplement for now, but what else can you do to treat and prevent ring bone? What exactly is it, and how long until I will see side effects? I am in close contact with my vet as well. She's obviously heard Perfect. your answers before. <laughs> <laughs> my horse is a four-year-old OTTB gelding. Four-year-old ring bone. That's a little bit sad, because ring bone is progressive. Okay, so her questions are kind of embedded in there, and mm -hmm. one of them was, what is it? Yep. So it's clearly a, a layman's term that we use to describe this, but it's, it's really bony growth around either the um, short pastern bone, the long pastern bone, or the pastern or coffin joints. So depending on where it is, you have a little bit different prognosis, mm -hmm. but at four years old, that's, that's fairly early. Um, the way and so for people who aren't familiar yeah. with all those different bones, where are we talking about on okay. the horse? So if you start at the ground, the bone that's in the horse's hoof is called P3, or the coffin bone, or mm -hmm. the first phalanx. Then the second bone and the joint is right at the level of the, where the hoof stops, so the coronary band. The second bone is the short pastern bone, or P2, mm -hmm. and the next bone is P1, or the long pastern bone. Then you get to the ankle fetlock and the canine bone. Okay. So it's that short distance from the hoof to the ankle, mm -hmm. the pastern. Okay. Um, if it's articular, meaning the new bone growth, because of instability, uh, maybe trauma, perhaps poor conformation, poor uh, shoeing or footing, if the new bone growth is around the joint, then it's articular and it's arthritis. Mm -hmm. If it's on the pastern bone itself, then it's periarticular, it's not arthritis. Okay. Still not great though. Okay. Um, what other questions that you have? Like, what is it and how to How diagnose long will it? she, until she'll see side effects? I'm curious um, what prompted her to get her vet out to diagnose it, but the things you see with ring bone is um, a short choppy stride, mm -hmm. perhaps some tripping or stumbling or shuffling. Um, it, and it can be outright lameness, like head bobbing, I don't want to put weight on this leg, it hurts, but it's really range of motion is affected. Mm -hmm. So they can't break over at the, at the pastern angle or hoof, and sometimes the hoof itself gets um, r squared off, the toe gets squared off, because they're just not breaking over. Mm -hmm. They're not lifting the foot up ab above the ground. Mm -hmm. So hard to say without knowing where it is how long it will be but she must be seeing something already if she already has a diagnosis one of the other questions hidden in this question was prevention which is always a tough one is there anything that people can do if they are starting with a young horse and obviously we love acronyms here at smart pack but for those of you not familiar ottb off oh. the track thoroughbred. Oh, okay. I'm like, there's an acronym in there? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's hidden. I'm acronym blind. <laughs> it's true. So obviously, having a horse come off the track, you are you can't do much about what's already happened. But if yeah. somebody were starting a young horse, is there things that put their horse more at risk or less um, in terms of prevention, being proactive about right. this um, kind of problem? Well, when you're getting a new horse, this is going to sound terrible, but that's one of the reasons you do a pre-purchase exam, to mm -hmm. find out what the horse has going on. And if it's something that has a good prognosis or a poor prognosis, will it continue, will continue to degrade or degenerate? The only thing you can do is really make sure that your hoof care is of high quality. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you're barefoot or shod or whatever, just that the angle's um, appropriate, that the hoof angle matches the pastern angle, that you don't go too long between trims, um, you've really got to have a good working relationship with your hoof care provider, your farrier. Okay. And, and you know, footing and, and, and working, you know, conditioning and that sort of thing. But really it comes down to the hoof care, I think, is the only thing you can really do. She's already on a joint supplement. That's a great idea. I, I really can't think of anything else.